Hello everyone. We're going to be talking a little about tactile fremitus. This is a particular piece of the physical exam that uh, folks find a little bit challenging to interpret. Now, as you know from your readings, that tactile fremitus is really a way of measuring the vibration that occurs from the bronchioles into the small air spaces that you can feel outside on the surface anatomy. And you do this by asking your patient to say 99 repeatedly as you place the palms of your hands against their back, directly against the skin in these three domains. You can also do this by using the, palm, the ulnar aspects of your hands. And again, in those three domains that you looked at earlier on the surface anatomy, you can place the ulnar surfaces of both of your hands while you ask your patient to say 99 and you feel the vibration of that uh, of the words 99 coming across onto your um, onto the surface of your hands. Now, how does that affect what your understanding might be of the disease process that's going on in your patient? Of course, if they have normal lungs, you will feel some vibration um, of the chest wall. Now, that vibration will increase whenever the lung becomes more solid. So one way to think about that is uh, in pneumonia, we call that consolidation because the small air spaces get filled with the inflammatory reaction as a result of an invasive bacteria or virus or fungus. So whenever you have a solid like pneumonia or a tumor, of course, then you will increase that vibration because vibration increases when then, whenever there is a liquidated or consolidated space. Tactile parameters will decrease whenever there is impedance of sound. So vibration decreases when there's air. In other words, if you have really extreme COPD or um, particularly bad emphysema where there is air trapping, that vibration will not make its way from the small air spaces out to the chest wall. So you will notice a decrease in the impedance of sound. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this liquid that we talk about depends really on where that space is, on how you might feel it on the chest wall. So let's take a look at a common, um, commonly misunderstood pathology. So if you look at this picture, here on the left side, you have a sponge that we are using as a normal lung. Now, if you were to create an infiltrate, infiltrate within that sponge and you were to have your hands on the outside, of this infiltrated space, you will notice that you will feel the vibration making its way through this infiltrated space on the chest wall much more so than you would on the normal lung. So now this infiltrate is either pneumonia or pulmonary edema, and so you're getting an increased tactile fremitus on the outside surface. Now what happens when there's an effusion? Now remember effusion is also liquid, but it is in a structurally separate space from the lung. So again, you have a sponge, that's the lung, but you have an effusion in the pleural space, which is liquid that's impeding the transmission of sound from the small air spaces out to the chest wall. Let me show you another way of trying to conceptualize this. Um, I'm gonna give you a, something that you can maybe try yourself at home. So we're gonna get a cup that's empty with air. We're gonna pretend that this is the lung and I'm gonna use a straw to act as a bronchial, okay? So if I breathe through this, I don't really feel much when I'm doing tactile fremitus on the chest wall. So if this is the chest wall, I've just breathed some air. If I say, mm -hmm, I feel some vibration on the chest wall. Now, let's fill this up with some water. And I'm going to call this consolidation for our purposes. I'm going to say 99 again and do tactile parameters on the chest wall. I feel much more vibration on the other aspects of my palms as I say 99 on the chest wall. Because this is now filled with water, that water or that consolidation is transmitting the vibration out to the chest wall much more easily. Okay? So liquid inside or consolidation inside the lung increases the vibration that makes its way outside to the chest wall. Now, what happens when you get liquid in the pleural space? Now, remember the pleural space is outside of the lung. 
So we're going to call this the visceral pleura. Um, I'm sorry, and this is the parietal pleura. Got water inside the parietal pleura. And there's your pleural effusion between the parietal pleura and the viscera pleura. Now, if I do the same thing, it's actually impeding the vibration out across onto the chest wall. So that liquid or the pleural effusion that has occurred between the pleural space is now creating a barrier to that vibration from the um, air spaces on the inside to the chest wall on the outside. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, what tactile pharmacist is really looking for is a change in the medium that you're assessing within the air spaces. So tactile pharmacist increases with consolidation like pneumonia or tumors, um, and tactile pharmacist decreases with increased air like an emphysema or a physical barrier such as pleural effusion.